Hi, Stephen from Exclim Tech News. Today I will uh, do an in-depth look at the new Aero 15 uh, WV8. But before I launch into that, there are two things. First, this will be uh, um, one of my last videos uh, being Exclim Tech News because I, I do want to change my channel back to Owner Disown, which I was, uh, what my channel name was before, and I will need a new logo. Something that represents my videos and the way I like to help people make uh, educated uh, purchasing decisions. My plan will be to have t-shirts printed um, and uh, use them as, a, as a sell them or prizes, gifts, that type of thing. So please feel free to send me your entries, uh, you know, designed entries by email. And for the winner, I will buy them a game of their choice. And it is also time for my game giveaway as I have reached 11,000 subs. Now I'll hire my friend here, the geek, somewhere in the video. Just email me the time frame he is in and uh, I will keep the competition going for 24 hours and randomly draw the winner from a hat. Now, as usual, the winner can choose a game of their choice, either on Steam or G2A, up to the value of $60. All right, so on to the Aero 15 WV8. What do I think of it? Well, I know I like it, but it does have a few caveats. For $2,000, you get a 6-core i7-8758 CPU, 16 gigs of DDR4, 2,666 MHz of RAM, a 512GB SSD, and a 144Hz 1080p display, and a GTX 1060 with 6GB of VRAM. For an extra $370, you can get, it with, uh, get the 15X with the same specs, uh, but a step up to the uh, GTX 1070 Max-Q GPU, and for $500 more, you can have uh, the OHD panel. It's a perfect laptop for travel. Due to the 5mm bezels, it's not much bigger than a 14-inch laptop or much smaller than, say, the cheaper 15-inch Dell G7 with similar specs. Now, Gigabyte's aim is to have a near bezel-less design, so they choose to have the 720p webcam at the bottom. Now, some may not mind that position at all because, let's face it, it's also on the Dell's Infinity Edge displays. Now, the image quality is a little bit grainy. But it's 1.8 centimeters or 0.7 inch thickness makes it easy to carry and it looks and fits well into a business setting. It also has a sizable 94 watt hour battery and optimal support so it has good battery life. Streaming YouTube at 25% brightness with battery share and power saver activated I got 7 hours which is slightly longer than its predecessor and will get you through a full day away from an outlet. Now the build quality is also good. It's made, of, made out of aluminium and the screen has mineral flex, and it's a solid throughout. The 144Hz Full HD panel is IPS, and, believe, and I believe it has a response time of about 7 milliseconds. It is Pantone certified, and is nice and bright. Even brighter than the 7th gen, and at 50% brightness, it is brighter than the Dell G7 at 100%. Indoors, the colors are bright and crisp, and they're good viewing angles. And even with the sun shining on it, the panel is still visible. And you know, the colour accuracy is also good with 94% of sRGB. It does have a, a little bit of backlight bleed at the bottom right hand corner unfortunately. Cool air is brought in from some good venting underneath and ex uh, expelled out near the hinge, uh, which is typical for these thin laptops. The good news is that the uh, critical areas of the keyboard remain nice and cool. The hinge area is about 41 degrees Celsius and the centre of the keyboard is 38 degrees. Underneath it does get very warm over the middle vents but bear in mind, this is loading both the CPU and the GPU, and if you're gaming, you are more likely to be using this on a desk. But for general use, it is certainly fine on your lap. Gigabyte have good fan control options as well. At idle, it is quiet. And they even have a quiet mode where the fan doesn't even spin up until the CPU hits 54 degrees Celsius. You also have set profiles such as the gaming fan and an option to set the fan at a certain percentage, or even create custom fan profiles depending on what the temperature is. Now I tested uh, using the normal fan profile, gaming fan, and max fan settings. So the normal fan maxes out at uh, 4,878 uh, RPM and produces 43 decibels of noise. Stepping up to the gaming fan setting, we get an extra 500 RPM and an extra five decibels of noise, but no reduction in temperature from the normal fan. Finally, the fan's at 100%, we get quite a loud 50 decibels with 5,486 RPM and an average uh, of 5 degrees Celsius temperature reduction. Looking at non-gaming temperatures such as doing a video encode, the CPU averages at 79 degrees using the gaming fan, so that's not bad. Let's see what happens when we do some gaming. The CPU is in orange and the GPU is in green. Using the gaming fan, the CPU averages 91 degrees, and even with the max fan, we are at 88 degrees. 
I notice throttling at 85 degrees, so it is clear that an undervolt is needed. And indeed, with a 150 millivolt undervolt, the CPU temperature drops down to 83 degrees on average, even using the gaming fan. As the CPU temperature drops, we do see a slight increase in average operating, operating frequency also. The GTX 1060 uh, fares much better averaging in the 70s. With a 6-core CPU, one would want to take advantage of its good multitasking ability. So I ran Cinebench and Heaven Benchmark continuously. Even from the outset, the Cinebench score of 725 was below that of the Dell G7, and subsequent runs saw the result uh, go actually into the low 600s, whilst the G7 remained steady. This shows that heavy use will lead to performance degradation. Now the power supply they give you is 150 watts, but you will notice that the max power pull from the wall was 175 watts. This means that the extra juice will have to come from the battery, possibly limiting performance. So let's have a look inside. You have two fans with small blades and two shared heat pipes, and the heat sinks are also pretty small. You have two RAM slots, maxing out at 32 gigabytes. You have the Intel 8265 Wi-Fi card, the crucial SATA 3 SSD with uh, read speeds of 530 megabytes per second and write speeds of 505. There is a second slot which you will notice is an NVMe PCI Express. Now near the 1994 watt hour battery there are two 2 watt speakers. It has a chiclet style keyboard with a distance of travel similar to its predecessor. The escape key also serves to activate as the max fan which I think is extremely useful. The spacebar is used to alter the keyboard lighting. Uh, there are actually three brightness settings. It's good to see you have a number pad on such a small chassis as well. I didn't notice any of the key stutter that uh, others had been noticing on uh, Notebook Review, but Gigabyte issued uh, Fusion Firmware Update 3.08, so perhaps that helped, but reports over at Notebook Review say it's a, it's a hardware issue, so, um, but I suspect it's probably pretty much isolated to just a small percentage of units. The Elan track trackpad is smooth and remains frustrating as ever. Tracking is you know, just okay and gestures remain poor. Gigabyte tell me that they will be having native Windows Precision drivers in the next generation, so I'll look forward to that. Now the keys are RGB and look cool. You can use their Fusion software to create various patterns, which is very nice. Another good feature is the battery indicator. Press the bottom right hand corner of the touchpad when the laptop is off and a series of lights light up, showing what, uh, how much battery is left. I also like the battery charging options to either charge it quickly or to uh, prolong the battery life by limiting the level to which it charges. In terms of bloatware, we, you know, we get Candy Crush and some kind of crazy uh, Disney game, but it's not too bad. They do include their Dolby Atmos software, which includes sound radar, which allows you to see where you know, bullets are coming from or where footsteps are coming from. On the left hand side, we have uh, the Ethernet port, USB 3 type A, HDMI 2.0, Mini Display 1.4, and a combo audio jack. On the right, there is a Kensington lock, the power port, two more USB 3 ports, a Thunderbolt 3 port, and a UHS-2 SD card reader. Now, I tested my Sony SD card, which is capable of 300 megabytes per second, to see how it performs. And as you can see, the card sticks out quite a bit. Now I saw 150 megabytes per second write and copying the same file back to the SSD, I saw up to 450 megabytes per second, which is great. Now the two 2 watt speakers are actually quite good uh, at about 72 decibels. Let's see how the Aero 15 gets on with applications and gaming. First, let me show you my overclock and undervolt settings. Using throttle stop, I set the uh, speed shift EPP to one. I disabled BT processor hot. I then set all the multipliers to 41 and the CPU core and cache with a 150 millivolt uh, offset voltage. And then I'd increase the, the turbo time limit to 96. And using MSI Afterburner, I overclocked the core by 170 megahertz and the memory by 70. Adobe Premiere Pro lets you choose between software encode using the CPU or uh, accelerated using the GTX 1060. As a comparison, I also tested the quad core i7-7820HK in my AOS X3, and that took 32 minutes. The i7-8750H in the Aero 15 uh, w shaved off five minutes, but look at the same CPU in the Dell G7. That was over three minutes quicker because it didn't throttle. However, applying my uh, overclock and undervolt settings yielded, uh, yielded a three and a half minute improvement. So I really, really recommend doing that. Just for the record, 
Running the same test using the, the GTX 1060 gave a time of 3 minutes 45 seconds. Running the Cinebench uh, multi-thread uh, benchmark, we see uh, an improvement over the i7 7700HQ of 42%. That is fantastic, especially when this laptop uh, launch price is the same as, it, as its predecessor was. Even compared to the overclocked i7 7820HK in my X3, we saw a 20% improvement. But look at what we get when we overclock it, an additional 17% improvement. This i7 8758H is a great CPU. Using Handbrake to encode a 4GB 1080p video file to MP4, we see that you get a huge uh, improvement over the i7 7700HQ, shaving off 10 minutes or about 25%. Just so you know, this is about the level of a desktop i7 7700K CPU. Overclocking it shaves off an additional 4 minutes and it's even faster than the i7 7700K at 4.7GHz, which is amazing. Using Lightroom to convert 50 photos to a video slideshow, we see about a 2 minute saving versus the i7 7700HQ. Uh, with overclocking, it helps uh, slightly also. Now onto some gaming. The GTX 1060 is suitable for 1080p gaming, so the choice of the uh, panel is perfect. And 144Hz versus 60Hz is noticeable in smoothness. Even though on the most part you won't get over 100fps in many of the modern games, even at uh, lower quality settings. Now sure, I will see uh, some screen tearing, so you may uh, opt to use V-Sync, uh, as there is no G-Sync support. But colours are great and will please most gamers. Perhaps the GTX 1070 option in the 15X may be the, the better option for those wanting to get uh, those higher frame rates and perhaps avoid using V-Sync. In PUBG we get about 10% uh, over the Alienware 13 and note that the minimum frame rate is also much improved, probably because of the new CPU. This is at auto settings, so 60fps is not bad at all. In Battlefield 1 auto settings DX12, we generally see about 60fps across the board. The faster clocked i7 7820HK manages about 10% faster. Far Cry 5 auto settings, we again see consistent performance between all G6 1060 notebooks, showing that the choice of CPU isn't really important. Overclocking gives 7% improvement, but we are still in the 60fps range. The Rise of the Tomb Raider sees an 8% improvement over the i7 7700HQ Alienware, and overclocking helps uh, another 4%. Finally, Rainbow Six Siege max settings. We see that overclocking takes us to the 40 FPS mark, an improvement of 11% over stock. But switch to Ultra and we get over 100 FPS, which is ideal for this display. So to conclude, if you want a lightweight and very portable gaming laptop that doesn't scream gamer, and also and then you're also a content creator, the Aero 15W V8 or the 15X V8 are fine choices. Sure, you can get cheap options, but they make sacrifices in build quality and size. My only reservations are the uh, Elan trackpad and the cooling solution. Thank you for watching. Check out our Discord server, which I'll put the link in the description in, uh, in below. And good luck finding the geek. Bye.